A girl is walking through a cemetery at night. She's a little nervous because it's dark, but it's the shortest way to get to her home. Suddenly, she hears a distinct tapping noise from the graves on her left. Her heart almost stops as she pauses mid-step. She hears it again, tap, tap, tap. She screams and starts running down the path. After a while, she stops to catch her breath. This is silly. She thinks to herself. There must be a rational explanation. She slowly retraces her steps and walks in the direction of the sound. Tap, tap, tap. There, sitting on a grave, is a gentle old man with a small hammer and chisel. He is tapping out an inscription on the tombstone. Phew! You scared me, the girl says, relieved upon seeing him. What are you carving there? The old man turns to her and smiles. I'm just correcting the spelling of my name. <laughs> a guy is spending his first night in prison. He hears someone in another cell shout out, 37! And the whole cell block bursts out laughing. Another guy shouts out, 74! Same thing, 46! And everyone loses their minds. He asks his cellmate, What's going on? Why are the numbers so funny? Well, we've all been here so long that we remember all the jokes by heart. To save time, we just give them numbers and tell them instead. Oh, I think I understand. Let me try. 63. There's a dead silence. The new guy says, What's wrong? Is that one not funny? <laughs> Thomas is 32 years old, and he is still single. One day a friend asked, Why aren't you married? Can't you find a woman who will be a good wife? Thomas replied, Actually, I've found many women I wanted to marry, but when I bring them home to meet my parents, my mother doesn't like them. His friend thinks for a moment and says, I've got the perfect solution. Just find a girl who's just like your mother. A few months later, they meet again, and his friend says, Did you find the perfect girl? Did your mother like her? With a frown on his face, Thomas answers, Yes, I found the perfect girl. She was just like my mother. You were right. My mother liked her very much. The friend said, Then what's the problem? Thomas replied, My father doesn't like her. <laughs> An older couple, who were both widowed, had been going out with each other for a long time. Urged on by their friends, they decided it was finally time to get married. Before the wedding, they went out to dinner and had a long conversation regarding how their marriage might work. They discussed finances, living arrangements, and so on. Finally, the old gentleman decided it was time to broach the subject of their physical relationship. How do you feel about s He asked, rather tentatively. I would like it infrequently, she replied. The old gentleman sat quietly for a moment, adjusted his glasses, then leaned over towards her and whispered. Is that one word or two? <laughs> a loving couple was celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary privately at home with a couple of bottles of champagne. A bit tipsy and feeling very intimate, the husband turns to his wife and asks, Tell me truthfully, have you ever been unfaithful to me? Well, she replied, Since you ask, to tell you the truth, I have been unfaithful on three occasions. What? How could you? Let me tell you about it, she said. The first time was back when we were first married. You needed open heart surgery, and we didn't have the money, so I went to bed with the surgeon and got him to operate for free. Gee, that was noble of you. And besides, I guess I should be grateful. But tell me, what about the second time? Do you remember that you wanted the position of the, and they were going to pass you over for someone else? Well, I went to bed with the president and the vice president, and they gave you the job. Hell, I think I could have done it on my own. But then again, I guess I should be grateful. And so, what about the third time? Do you remember two years ago when you wanted to become president of the baseball team and you were missing 53 votes? <laughs> a man and his wife were traveling down the highway when they saw the lights of a patrol car behind them. When they pulled over, the patrolman came up to the window and said, I am going to give you two tickets. 
one because you were speeding and one because you didn't have your seat belt fastened. The man said, I did too have my seat belt fastened. I just loosened it when you came up to the car. The patrol man said to the man's wife, I know he didn't have his seat belt fastened. Isn't that right, lady? She replied, Well, officer, I learned a long time ago not to argue with my husband when he's drunk. <laughs> a judge was interviewing a woman regarding her pending divorce and asked, What are the grounds for your divorce? She replied, About four acres and a nice little home in the middle of the property with a stream running by. No, he said. I mean, what is the foundation of this case? It is made of concrete, brick, and mortar. She responded. I mean, he continued, what are your relations like? I have an aunt and uncle living here in town, and so do my husband's parents. He said, do you have a real grudge? No, she replied. We have a two-car carport and have never really needed one. Please, he tried again. Is there any infidelity in your marriage? Yes, both my son and daughter have stereo sets. We don't necessarily like the music, but the answer to your questions is yes. Ma'am, does your husband ever beat you up? Yes, she responded. About twice a week he gets up earlier than I do. Finally, in frustration, the judge asked, Lady, why do you want a divorce? Oh, I don't want a divorce, she replied. I've never wanted a divorce. My husband does. He said he couldn't communicate with me. <laughs> One evening last week, my girlfriend and I were getting into bed. Well, the passion starts to heat up, and she eventually says, I don't feel like it. I just want you to hold me. I said, what? What was that? So she says the words that every boyfriend on the planet dreads to hear. You are just not in touch with my emotional needs as a woman enough for me to satisfy your physical needs as a man. She responded to my puzzled look by saying, Can't you just love me for who I am and not what I do for you in the bedroom? Realizing that nothing was going to happen that night, I went to sleep. The very next day, I opted to take the day off of work to spend time with her. We went out to a nice lunch and then went shopping at a big, unnamed department store. I walked around with her while she tried on several very expensive outfits. She couldn't decide which one to take, so I told her we'd just buy them all. She wanted new shoes to complement her new clothes, so I said, let's get a pair for each outfit. We went on to the jewelry department, where she picked out a pair of diamond earrings. Let me tell you, she was so excited. She must have thought I was one wave short of a shipwreck. I started to think she was testing me because she asked for a tennis bracelet when she didn't even know how to play tennis. I think I threw her for a loop when I said, that's fine, honey. She was almost nearing sexual satisfaction from all of the excitement. Smiling with excited anticipation, she finally said, I think this is all, dear. Let's go to the cashier. I could hardly contain myself when I blurted out, no, honey, I don't feel like it. Her face just went completely blank as her jaw dropped with a baffle. What? I then said, Honey, I just want you to hold on to this stuff for a while. You are just not in touch with my financial needs as a man enough for me to satisfy your shopping needs as a woman. And just when she had this look like she was going to kill me, I added, Why can't you just love me for who I am and not for the things I buy you? Apparently, I am not have tonight. <laughs>